Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna, Jaitanya Charanji, Dandrath Pranam. Hare Krishna. Welcome back. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Great to, get to be here. Thank you. Thank you for giving us your time and um, you know energy and discussing very relevant topics. I'm very grateful. <laughs> for those of you who are listening and uh, not new to our channel, Satan Charan Prabhu has been around many times uh, on here. Today we have a very special topic uh, about Karna and um, how to understand his dilemma, his uh, difficult situation. Uh, you know, it's it's a very uh, sad story to hear. Was he was he wronged? Was he a wrong hero or was he wronged or wronged hero? Well, how how he was unlucky or it was unfair. We feel that many times in our own life, uh, when we're put into very difficult situations, and uh, understanding his story can really help us navigate our own life and make possibly better choices. Because was it just a matter of his destiny, or did his cha his uh, de decisions and choices did that change the outcome for uh, Karna? So uh, mm. thank you so much, Chetan Sir and Prabhu. I'm going to let you take it away because you <laughs> this is a uh, something very close yes. to you. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Mm. Thank you for taking up this topic. Also, and first of all. Now, when I started reading the Rama Mahabharat for the first time, this was I watched Mahabharat as a child on TV. Then I read Amar Chitra Katha. And then I started reading mm. the book. This was long before I was in, introduced to a specific spiritual path. So the character I empathized the most with was actually Karana. Karana. <laughs> so right. So that fact that life was so unfair to him that he had to fight against the world he was deprived of what was right for him right because of his birth that was that was so in one sense relatable we all have mm. certain things certain ways in which we feel life has been unfair to us now, some exactly. of us may not be born in a very wealthy mm. family some of us may ha not have a very high iq some of us may not have the greatest of looks some of mm. each each of us can find out some way in which we could say life has denied us something important. So that itself leads to us facing a uphill battle in life. So in that sense, Karana is an extremely relatable character. Mm -hmm. And over the years, as I started connected with the with the Vaishnava tradition, the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition, and I started reading the broader context. Then it struck me that the Mahabharata actually goes beyond black and white. Mm. That it doesn't say this character is black and this character is white. There are, of course, there are, say, in the, in the Ramayana, relatively speaking, Ravan is evil, is an evil character. Mm. And Ram is a virtuous character. There may be a few mm -hmm. incidents which may be questionable here and there. But overall, mm -hmm. The Mahabharat is much more nuanced. Right. So, as I actually read the Mahabharat, it struck me that yes, life was unfair to Karna. He was born as a, he was born in royalty as Kunti's son, mm. but he was never given the honor of a Kshatriya. Right. But then, if you look at it, was life not unfair to Arjuna also? If you consider from that perspective, Arjuna exactly. was born in royalty, but what had happened is father had already renounced. Mm. Pandu had retired from the world and was living in the forest when the Pandavas were born. Mm -hmm. And the Pandavas did not get any royal comforts when they grew up. Right. And then when the Pandavas came back because their father died, so now the death of a father practically meant they became like orphans. So mm -hmm. they had their mother, of course, but they were in a forest in a dangerous place. And when they came back, what happened? Duryodhan saw them as a threat. Mm -hmm. And Duryodhan constantly tried to not only undermine them, but have them assassinated. He right, kill them. In Bhima first. He then tried to have them burnt alive in Varanavat. So the point is that what had the Pandavas done wrong to mm -hmm. 
to face a constant threat to their lives to face mm. such constant animosity mm. very In interesting sense, that yes karna had it bad yes he, he did not get his royal rights but did the pandavas have it great did arjuna have it great <laughs> in one sense life at one level we can say from this life's perspective mm. uh, everybody can point out ways in which life has dealt with us unfairly right okay. for that matter karna uh, his adopted parents the parents who adopted him he never lost his father he always had his parents he never lived in his own home in the threat will the next meal be poisoned are my relatives mm-hmm. trying to assassinate me so in that sense i'm not saying karna had it easy but no. the point is arjuna also didn't have it easy so right. one of the things which the scriptures begin with is that life in the world is you could say not easy for anyone mm. it's not easy for anyone and now right. which unfairness is greater mm. the, that he was didn't get his royal rights as a kshatriya or that arjuna had to live uh, with constant threat to his life without a father this is very difficult to decide so that would be the starting point i would like to make before we can go that's, further into discussion that's a really good point because i think that is truly the lesson here because instead of focusing on how wrong uh, how how i've been wronged in life if we if that becomes our meditation then uh, it's almost insurmountable there will always be something more that is unjust and unfair in our life but if we can actually assess the reality around us that everybody it's just the the nature of the material world of samsara is is truly a, a place of suffering and injustice even in duryodhan's life you can actually empathize in some way sometimes you can look at his thing and his situation and really think oh uh, it's poor duryodhan <laughs> there's a part of you that can empathize so actually uh, this point that you make is very relevant that um, we should be able to be a bit objective about our own pain and suffering yes that is true now one reason that it works out like this is that sometimes our view of history is shaped largely by our particular you could say political perspective or even our driving narrative mm. so what happens is uh, karana's uh, karana's an unfairness that karana suffered it plays into the mainstream narrative that india had this terrible caste system and it discriminated exactly. against people it deprived them of so many people so many things in their life and then in one sense karna becomes the poster child for the discrimination of the caste system exactly and therefore his his uh, the injustices are for his life the difficulty that he went through in his life they become highlighted quite a bit and any right. other discriminations become not so highlighted mm right it's used as a scapegoat as kind of like a something to bring down the this you know sanatan vedic dharma vedic sanskriti mm. uh, you know i was just reading a, a headline recently that there's a lot of conversion going on in within the sikh, sikh community in punjab and one of the the, mm. the top the headline was uh, sikhs uh, uh, escaping caste casteism they're escaping the discrimination amongst this varna and the, the caste system of the hindu or the sikh community Uh, so it really is a, a contentious topic, very much at the heart of, um, of, of you know, politics, like you say, and the narrative that we are are hearing mm. and maybe also, uh, you know, repeating without realizing that, uh, what, you know, you say it enough times that the caste system, the varna, the system is against uh, the, you know, maybe the lower caste. and immediately that's the story that's that's our our viewpoint in life and that becomes our reality um so good point yes so two things are there firstly i would like to categorically assert that the caste system that ex- the way it exists today is terrible it right. should be eliminated it should be ter- there's mm. no there no two thoughts about it that the mm. way it exists right now is often highly discriminatory highly exploitative mm. and uh, it is something which uh, in many ways would have automatically gone away with the flow of history 
because if right. you see even in the in in the west also even if see you say now you are in britain britain mm-hmm. itself had a hierarchy it may not exactly be called the caste system but even now right. there are tv series like say upstairs downstairs or downton abbey which depict yeah, yeah, yeah. the life of the aristocracy and the life of the working class that's quite rigidly hierarchical that was there but yeah. uh, but as you could say society has changed uh, people's ways of earning a livelihood have changed uh, the that has got dissolved now yeah. that could have happened in india and to some extent that has largely happened in urban india right in urban now india now it's, it's economical tyranny before it was maybe in india we may have had caste problems you know yes. maybe now it's, it's but now it's all a capitalist uh, caste system exactly, capitalist yeah. caste system So it depends. Yeah, right. Uh, what what are we being subjugated by? Yeah. Yes. So, so but unfortunately, in the rural areas, still the caste has become a means by which uh, political power can be won over. It has right. become like a defining reality in all you know, all real political calculations. So yes, the caste system is terrible, but in some ways mm-hmm. we have perpetuated the caste system and even. Uh, to some extent you could say exaggerated the evils of the caste system mm-hmm. so with all with with all due acknowledgement of the discrimination that happened to the caste system we have to see that uh, we could discuss this separately in another podcast but if you yes say, i think we should relatively I really, speaking, yeah uh, i think it's yeah, a very ahead. important especially because uh, shila prabhupad and iskon uh we do want to bring back the varnashram system they the they the varnashram system it is a very big project for shila prabhupad very close to our his heart that we actually understand what is the true meaning you know of when krishna says chaturvarnyam maya shishtam i have created these four uh, classes of of men why has he done that to understand it better i think we should have a maybe the next podcast can be about it in depth because there is a way a world in which that had a purpose and and yes. uh, it was not meant as a discrimination it was not a birth right it was not that it's guna and karma vibhagasha not janma yes. <laughs> yes yes very true so yes we could discuss that in future so uh, so we could uh, focus right now on karana if you're okay with that that yes, yes. karana was deprived but uh, no rather than saying that he alone was a victim of an unfair society we could say at one level everyone faces unfairness in life right it's just at different levels we mm-hmm. say like, like how do we come if in today's world let's compare a child who is born in a very wealthy family where the parents are too busy have to have time for the child the parents don't even get along with each other it's a wealthy mm-hmm. but very cold family and mm-hmm. the other had a child who is born in a poor but relatively loving family mm-hmm. so who is better off exactly If once we once we start uh, stacking unfairness it's very difficult to stack that in one sense uh, you could say we have discussed this in our topic of destiny that you know, we are all given a certain set of cards and mm-hmm. our life is determined to some extent by the cards which we have got but that nobody gets a perfect set of cards in life so no. nobody gets that so we all have a certain set of cards and our life's trajectory is determined largely by how we play the cards that we have so exactly. we could focus on that exactly. aspect yes um, wonderful so i'm just repeating what you said our, our <laughs> it we all have an unfair set of cards a different version possibly but truly what what will affect the outcome is how we deal with that what what do we do with that deck of cards that's uh, yes. yeah yes Very now important. in this case you know in one sense uh, because uh, we could look at karana's life but i would like to look at the parallel trajectories of karana's and arjuna's life so that we okay. can uh, we can understand that yes because their rivalry in one sense defines the mahabharat so first thing is both of them are heroic characters both of them went on to become great warriors and mm-hmm. both of them did make something worthwhile and even impressive out of their lives so right. arjuna let's, let's let's look at karna now mm-hmm. karna he did he did not have that royal 
royal privileges, royal advantages. But still he searched around and he found a guru who would accept him. Mm. So he, he found a guru. So now he faced rejection from Drona and eventually he found he was accepted by Parshuram. Now there are definitely certain things which we could say were unfair. At one mm. level, <clears throat> when he went to Drona, Drona said that the, the Drona, he realized that Drona may not teach him. So mm -hmm. now there are different versions of the versions of the Mahabharat. So how my, how in whether he categorically approached Drona and Drona refused him, or he just didn't decide not to approach Drona, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So he he did not get trained in Drona's academy, but he yeah. eventually did get trained through with under Parshuram. Now, at this point, there is, he went on to become a great archer. Now, Arjuna also, as I said, they lived in an insecure home. Mm -hmm. Because throughout, they were never, the Pandavas, they knew that Bhishma allowed them. Bhishma allowed them as their grandsons. But at the same time, Bhishma was always bound by vow to the, to the Kauravas. Mm -hmm. So when they came to know about the what the attempt that Bhima had that the Duryodhan had made to kill Bhima, when they came to they realized that actually they had they tried to kill us at Varanavarth also. Now they never were able to open this open to open their hearts to Bhima and take his guidance. Mm -hmm. Bhishma Dev to, yeah. to survive in that kind of atmosphere without a father figure. Now, Vidura did become like a surrogate father for them to some extent. But Vidura didn't have much influence. Mm. Dhritarashtra never listened to him. So, the yeah. we could say that the family tree is that Dhritarashtra and Pandu were the the two, you could say, patriarchs over there. Pandu yeah. passed away. So, from Dhritarashtra, we had Kauravas. Duryodhana was their head. And then from the, the Pandu, we had the Pandavas. Mm -hmm. So, the Pandavas never really felt ho at home in Hastinapur. Right. So even in, amid that insecurity, Arjuna found his security in his archery. Now he mm. He's of course, at one level, he was a great devotee. But at this point, he also put aside all the turbulence that was there at his home. And he focused mm -hmm. and he trained himself. So the fact that both of them grew up to be great archers, that shows that they played their cards well. So Karana played, yeah. uh, Karana had difficulty, Arjuna had difficulty. And both mm. of them faced those difficulties well to actually grow up and become uh, great archers. Right. Great point that, uh, that, that the, the handicap in one sense of Arjuna and the Pandavas was that they had no patriarchal support or maybe it doesn't have to be patriarchal. They had their mother, but in terms of uh, political and uh, family support around their home situation, security, that's a huge disadvantage for someone who is trying to, you know, who's part of the royal uh, succession. So that, that, that's a very good point that sometimes, sometimes we, may, we may forget that that's a great disadvantage to Ar Arjuna, but he has also overcome that, just like Karna has found a guru, despite him being classed, uh, labeled, uh, and, and to really rise to the occasion. Drupada, so that's a uh, very powerful ruler. So mm. That's when the dynamic changed for them. So right. maybe we could uh, we could move forward in this change of change of dynamics. We can look at them. How okay. how you could say uh, you can say fate favored them or how their fortunes changed. Mm -hmm. So for the Pandavas, for Arjuna, it was in Draupadi Swayamvar. That and it's a whole long story. We won't go into it. They were dressed disguised yeah. as, the, as the Brahmanas, but they, they as a Brahmana, Arjuna won the hand of Draupadi, and then eventually mm -hmm. uh, they all the five Pandavas got married to Draupadi. But that time, mm -hmm. that was in one sense the time when the Pandavas' fortunes started changing dramatically. In that right. meeting, or at that place in Drupada's kingdom of Panchala, they not only allied with. Uh, Drupada and he became their father-in-law and actually protecting his daughter means protecting his son-in-laws also. So the Kauravas right. also realized we cannot just fool around with them. But another mm. thing that happened that 
it was in Draupadi Swayamvar that Arjuna and Krishna met for the first time. In mm. fact, Krishna came forward and introduced himself. I am Krishna. And the Padawa said, really? you know, everybody knows you. <laughs> no way. Oh, I didn't know that. Very interesting. <laughs> oh. That was a very sweet thing. Wow. So, right. So that was the change, you could say the change in fortune for the Pandavas, Arjuna specifically. Okay. Now that so, came by his, by Arjuna's archery skills. Mm. Yeah, that he was such a great archer that he was able to hit the target even when nobody else could hit it. Wow. And uh, that, now if you consider, let's look at Karna. His mm. fortune also changed dramatically a little before this. When the Pandavas and the Kauravas completed their education in the academy of Drona, at the end of it, there was like a graduation ceremony. And the right. graduation ceremony centered not just on them getting like some degrees or certificates, but mm -hmm. it centered more on them exhibiting their skills. Right. So the martial exhibition, that's a whole chapter in the Mahabharat. It's quite a dramatic chapter. The, the idea of that was multiple things for the students to exhibit the skills that they have learned. It is also to uh, reassure the citizens because citizens would assemble mm. to watch. These are going to the heirs to our kingdom and they are mm -hmm. competent. They are great at their job and therefore they are worthy of giving us protection. So they are worthy to be served. So the martial right. exhibition served many purposes. It was primarily from Drona's academy, Dronacharya's Gurukul. Mm -hmm. So at that place, all the, Kaur the Kauravas and the Pandavas exhibited their skills. So Duryodhan was great at mace fighting. Abhima was also great at mace fighting. And then Arjuna was peerless at archery. Mm -hmm. So in one sense, Arjuna was, was the champion over there. The, the, his archery skills stunned everyone. And as mm -hmm. everybody is applauding, suddenly they heard like almost thunderous footsteps of some figure coming in. <laughs> in fact, uh, you can that is in the Mahabharat, the first entry of the adult Karna. Mm. He appears at Dronacharya's Gurukul's that martial exhibition. And he right. says that whatever Partha has done, I can exceed that. Mm. Do I have the permission? So Oh, everybody is just surprised. Who is this person? I said, okay. And he started exhibiting. Now, he was brilliant. And he used the full gamut of his skills. And he equaled Arjuna. He couldn't exceed Arjuna. Mm -hmm. And because he wanted to exhibit his skills, can I have a duel with her? With Arjuna. At that time, Drona said, he was asked, what are your antecedents? So hmm. Karana's head fell because he was not born in royalty. Hmm. So at that time, Duryodhan came to his help. And right. Duryodhan said, you know, can't you see? Can't you see his abilities? Can't you see his figure? Can't you see his uh, pers personality? How can hmm. a person like this not be a Kshatriya? Do you hmm. think uh, he used he used, he used quite an eloquent speech over there? He says, can a mouse mm. give birth to a lion? He must mm. be born of a Kshatriya family. He is a Kshatriya. Mm. And he says, if mm. that is the qualification over here, then I will make him a king. And mm. he gave him the Anga Pradesh. The, he made him the king of Anga. And at that time, there itself he was enthroned as the king. And he, So now, on seeing this, now Karana's father, Adirath was also there in the audience and he came rushing forward to see this fortune. His son has become a king now. And mm. Adirath offered his allegiances to him. And then some of the people in the audience started, oh, he's actually the son of a charioteer. He's not a Kshatriya. Mm. But Duryodhana was categorical. He's a Kshatriya now. He's a king. Mm -hmm. And then when the ceremony was completed, they were about to start fighting, but the sun set at that time. And then mm. the, the fight was, the duel didn't happen. But at that time, Karana felt very touched by, uh, by Duryodhana's mm. gesture. And he said, well, you have saved my honor today. How can I ever mm. repay you? And mm -hmm. Duryodhana said that, I don't want anything from you except your friendship. 
And <laughs> I was even more touched by said that you will have from me till my last breath. Right. So <laughs> this was a turning point for for Karana's life. Mm. So Karana also by exhibiting the archery skills formed got an ally in Duryodhana in and just as Arjuna got an ally in Drupada and that's mm-hmm. how their life trajectory started uh, moving towards a more positive direction so both of them did this by their archery skills by their expertise beautiful great can can i just interject with a with a question at this point then um yes, please. you know you know uh, when draupadi rejected karna and said that she would not allow him to participate in her swayamvar uh, you know she she basically rejected him because he he, he was not a kshatriya and on this hand we are seeing that that duryodhan is making a very valid argument just like i made a little earlier that it's not by birth but it's by your qualities your guna and karma so so uh, it's very difficult to swallow the, the idea that somehow the the uh, dronacharya and all of the committee that was deciding it were technically wrong in one sense and somehow duryodhan has managed to make valid arguments <laughs> Uh, on behalf of Ka- yeah. Karana, in, instead of uh, and somehow Draupadi rejecting him seems quite superficial and a little bit mean. It, it seems that if he's qualified, he should be allowed to take the take the you know the challenge in the swim. But so, uh, how would how would you help us to reconcile the idea that somehow uh, Duryodhan could be right in this instant in one sense, or is he? Yes. Okay. Well, there are two things over here. First is uh, good that you asked this question, and uh, let's look at the two incidents. Even in the martial exhibition, at one level, what was the purpose of the martial exhibition? It was to exhibit the skills of Drona students. Mm. So, in one sense, you know, it was it was that their graduation ceremony. Say, That's if you fun. consider. In, in, in any way, if you look at it, if there is any institute, you know, any institute mm-hmm. which is teaching a particular skills, say if there is mm-hmm. an institute which is debating skills, mm-hmm. now they would like to show how well they are able to debate. If somebody is playing fencing, somebody is playing golf, somebody is playing cricket, well, mm-hmm. you could have somebody else coming in, and there are competitions where others can participate. Mm-hmm. But here, it was uh, exhibition for his students. Mm-hmm. So in that sense. Karana was, you could say, a gate crasher. Mm. He didn't belong there. Now, of course, you could say that was the moment for him to exhibit his glory. Whether he would have got an opportunity mm. again or not, that is open mm. to question. Mm-hmm. But the point is that was he deprived simply because he was uh, he was uh, not from a Kshatriya family? If that had mm. been the case, then they they might not have allowed him. first itself to exhibit his skills it was mm. only when he asked for a duel achha, it was achha. only when he asked for his duel for a duel that time they asked okay what are your antecedents so right, the point right. is that it is oh, that's it, a good first point all, yeah first of all it was just a exhibition of the skills of drona students and mm-hmm. secondly if it's if you are going to have a duel you need to know even today say if there is some world champion tennis player yeah. and that person say now, now the australian open in tennis is going on and Suddenly, some unknown player comes and I want to challenge you. Okay, yes. which country are you from? Where do you come from? Mm-hmm. That asking doesn't necessarily have to reflect a discriminatory caste system. Wanting to know I the agree. antecedents of a person of a person is is natural. Say generally, right. if you want to speak in a public forum where there are uh, different opinions on a very divisive and important issue, one of the right. things people will ask: Whom whom are you speaking for? Whom do you represent? right so that natural question so now it could be because of the caste system but it doesn't have to be like that mm. Mm. okay and having said that yes see duryodhan did get this right in terms of rhetoric he was definitely right however we also have to look beyond the words to the intentions right what duryodhan intention duryodhan yeah. was always uh, a politically cal- calculative person and here at this particular point he felt confident that if there is a confrontation between me and the pandavas i can take 
Karna. Yeah, to help me defeat the Pandavas. So in the back of the mind, it's always like, okay, who can I, who's my ally? Uh, he, he didn't have anyone uh, who could actually counter Arjuna. Right. And he saw in Duryodhan the exact person who served his political needs. So he may yeah. have had the right rhetoric, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But it's it, now, yes, when the others ask the question, they might not necessarily have been motivated by caste considerations alone. We can't look mm -hmm. into people's hearts. Mm -hmm. And that question would be a reasonable question even in a normal contest, even if there are no caste contact, contact no, no caste considerations at all. Mm -hmm. And was Duryodhana a champion of equality as such? No, hmm. for him that rhetoric of equality was simply a tool. Talk. Yeah, yeah, it was just a tool to win Karana over to his side. Right. So, so in that sense, yeah, Duryodhan used. So, mm -hmm. what is that saying? In in the Christian tradition, they have even the devil can quote the Bible. So, <laughs> <laughs> ah. so like that, somebody can speak the right thing, but do they have the right intent in the intention. heart? Intention, right. So. That is something which we will we will discuss as we move forward. So now coming mm. specifically to your question about Draupadi, there are two things. Uh, now that sometimes what happens is there is the original narrative of the Mahabharata text and then mm. there are dramatized retellings. They may be on television, mm. they may be in movies, they may be in novels, historical fiction. So most of us, we read the dramatized retellings of the Mahabharata and we, sure. we don't actually read the original text. So now mm. even the original text you can say that there are some recensions. The Mahabharata is a very very big book. It's 110,000 mm. verses. So to wow. preserve every single verse, 110,000 verses makes it like the longest poem in world history, poem in the world history. So wow. some, there might be some change, some, some slightly different versions at various places. Mm. But overall, we have, we have, we can say, I'll talk about two, three different scenarios. What exactly happened? Now, according to Madhvacharya, who has uh, written a commentary called the Mahabharata Tatpar Nirnay, where he, he gives an analysis of what happened and how it was fair or unfair. So, mm. what he says over there was that he was, when Karana came out, now, I'm talking about Draupadi and Karana here right now, mm. that when he came to the Swayam, the swine would shoot the target. Now, he was laughed at by the other kings. He's not a Kshatriya. Mm. And mm. maybe Draupadi also looked disapprovingly at her, at him. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. disturbed him, that angered him. And he shot, but he missed the target. That's, mm. that's one version of the story. The other version of the story is that, that actually Drishtadyumna was who was in one sense like the master of the ceremonies over there. Mm -hmm. Rupada was the king and Drishtadyumna was presiding. So for example, every time a king would come forward and he would mm -hmm. be So now this king is coming forward. Mm -hmm. So Drishtadyumna himself said that, you know, I don't want my sister to marry a Suta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the third version is that Draupadi herself said that. But this is, mm -hmm. I don't want to marry him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the third version. But whatever it is, let's look at how Arjuna approached the situation. We remember that Arjuna was in a Brahmana Vesh at that time. So when Arjuna came forward, the first thing he did was that he asked Dhishtadyumna. Mm -hmm. I know that this is a Swayamvar for Kshatriyas. <clears throat> so are Brahmanas allowed to participate in this? So... Dushyadimna looked around, he looked at his father and his father nodded and he said, yes. The Brahm he said, the Brahmanas are always respected by Kshatriyas, so you can participate. And people mocked him also. His, this Brahmana has become infatuated with lust on seeing the beauty mm. of Draupadi. How can mm. he, he win a contest mm -hmm. which Kshatriyas can't win? But the right. point I'm making is, although Arjuna in one le several level was born a Kshatriya, second level he was in the war, he was wearing the Dress of Vesh. a Brahmana, but mm -hmm. he Vesh of a Brahmana, but he didn't presume mm, that he had a right 
to automatically be allowed. Interesting. But he would he asked. So he didn't presume. He asked. Hmm. But unfortunately, Karna didn't do that. Karna just presumed that I'll be entitled to fight. And beyond whatever happens, the for whatever reason, he might have not been able to put forward his suit for Draupadi. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not that at least none of the versions of the Mahabharat does Draupadi go about on a on a vitriolic series of insults of of. Uh, Karna, she says, "Okay, I don't want to marry him." If that's what she says, I said there are multiple versions of the story, but even hmm. if we take the version that is the least charitable for Draupadi, mm -hmm. that she said, "I don't want to marry." Mm -hmm. Okay, ultimately, mm -hmm. it is her swayamvar. Yes, that is an important like, thing I, to understand. Swayamvar, yeah. I choose my choice. Yeah, yeah. So there may yeah. be some criteria which may be set, mm. but. Beyond the criteria, the fact is that the swayam it is a swayam work. Mm -hmm. So it's a swayam rather than seeing this as Karana being dis dis discriminated against. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we can see that as Draupadi asserting her right to choose. So again, <laughs> it, it goes into the narrative. Now, if you mm -hmm. want to see narrative, the narrative as anti-Vedic, how it is caste system, how the caste system was so discriminated, we'll focus on the fact that. Karana, Karana was discriminated against. Mm. But as you can see, that oh, Draupadi, the Draupadi is right to choose, and she chose. Mm -hmm. She chose. It's not very, to... it's very, very appropriate to actually be mindful of what are what are we uh, prioritizing in our narratives, because she's absolutely uh, entitled to choose. Uh, yes. If she if she doesn't like the the the, the uh, character, maybe attitude, external looks of someone, she's she's allowed to say no. Yes, very very good point. Okay, yeah. so moving. So the point I was making here is that that particular thing was yeah it was unfair it was painful it was uh, it was distressing it was definitely not a pleasant experience but again do we have to uh, drag this down to the, a caste discrimination alone that is open mm -hmm. to question. That in every social society there are certain norms. Mm -hmm. We have to be right. mindful of those norms. Mm -hmm. You know, say even today, if say, if say, if an Indian student wants to get admission in the UK university, the rules mm -hmm. are different for somebody who is a uh, uh, say a British citizen or English citizen and somebody who is an Indian citizen. Yeah. Well, an Indian citizen can't just demand the same rights which a British citizen has. Now you say that exactly. I mean, isn't there discrimination based on nation? I mm. didn't choose to be born in India. Mm. Why are you favoring British uh, British students? <laughs> exactly. Well, and you know, it's it's quite different in terms of rate of the rates and the charges and the various requirements you know, for mm. an international student to get admission in America or the UK or uh, even Australia or any of the countries where people want to go for education. It's yeah, you got to pay much more, much more expensive. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, we can't just expect that for my sake, because I am so competent, all social norms will be neglected. And if those social yeah. norms are not being neglected, that indicates how terribly unfair the society is. Mm. Well, not necessarily. So you were drawing parallels between Arjuna and, um, and Karna's life. That's, that's where we, were, we began. Where you were mm. saying that they both, you know, made the most of their situation. And uh, their lives turned at different points when Arjuna got support yes. from Drupada and uh, Karana got support from Duryodhan. And then moving forward, the, um, what they did with that support, that's very important. Yeah. You know, so now we could, if you want, we can move ahead further. Yes, uh, so please. There are two incidents now, which I, I told about what is the actual story and uh, what is the dramatized retelling or dramatized depiction of the story so <clears throat> later on when the pandavas performed the rajasuya yagya and they built indraprastha at that time the uh, kauravas came to visit and then we know the story in the maya sabha duryodhan slipped and fell mm. so duryodhan couldn't make out oh this is this land or is this water where it was land he thought it was where it was water he thought it was land and he slipped and fell yeah. 
and then at that time seeing him draupadi uh, laughed him, draupadi and other palace ladies laughed now that mm. is true so mm. that that is true but it's one thing is very categorical whatever versions of the mahabharata i have seen till now i see there are some differences but no version of the original text of the mahabharat says that say, says the dialogue that is attributed to draupadi mm. it is a beta andha right the, the son of a blind person is a blind person draupadi yeah, makes, that. that that line makes her seem like a vicious person like somebody who is quite uh you know malicious and really hateful towards him uh that is that is i haven't found that anywhere that's a complete dramatization and right. and if you look at overall draupadi's character she mm. she is uh, her character is very different from sita sita is very mm. mild and draupadi can be very assertive sometimes aggressive also but mm-hmm. she, although she is aggressive she is never ill mannered she right. is not she is not uncultured mm-hmm. so when she feels there is any injustice or discrimination she will mm. raise her voice strongly but it's mm. not that she ill mannered to speak something like this so that statement is actually not in harmony with her overall character also so right. not only is it not in mahabharat but it is also not in harmony with the way her character is it's mm. a now we may say still you know, if somebody has fallen why would you laugh we may say that even in today's civilized world if somebody falls we, we may not laugh right we said why, why would she laugh like that when she laughed why the broader context was duryodhan on seeing the prosperity of the kaurava of the pandavas was extremely jealous yes. so mm. out of that jealousy see when somebody is insecure they often demand more respect and they mm. take offense where there is none like somebody acts mm. very pompous and conceited and they mm. demand respect from everyone so he would snap at the servants he would not behave in a proper way he was mm. himself because he was feeling insecure it, this pandavas they got so much wealth mm. he was trying to put up that and generally normally if somebody la- somebody falls the cultured people will not laugh at that but mm. it is but generally if somebody is putting on a lot of airs mm. and then they are exposed then oh serves you right it is like that it mm. is like somebody tends to be something that they are not and mm. then their their pretense is exposed so it was not exactly malicious it was a contextual reaction and the mm-hmm. mahabharat it does not glow it does not praise draupadi for laughing it does no. not say it was a good thing yudhishthira no. tried to stop her also but mm. it was a natural reaction it was not malicious the mm. way he was behaving in that situation mm. The, the because he was acting such like a such a pompous uh, we could say a stuffed up person kind of thing so that was a natural mm. laugh but it didn't mean bad thing it did not mean uh, anything evil mm. so so that was that was just the, another example of dramatization which leads to a distortion of both the mood and the narrative mm. right mm. we 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 tend to do that just to serve our own uh prejudices in some way but yeah that's very true. interesting very interesting so so um if if i could maybe ask was it you know because in the vedic culture we talk very highly about gratitude uh you know and and so you you now we're speaking about duryodhan and um you know draupadi having a <laughs> maybe maybe the whole mahabharat happened because some may even pinpoint this point that the way he wants to now disrobe her disrespect her he's very angry with her but but if you come back to karna he now is bound in his gratitude with with uh with duryodhan because duryodhan has helped him is there any version of the vedic system where he would be allowed to forgo that gratitude forgo that um, that that he now owes him he he kind of owes duryodhan wouldn't it be wrong if he one one day woke up and realized duryodhan is not on the right side i should i should now you know switch sides cuz pandavas are actually correct uh so where do we draw the line with gratitude that is a very important question so now let's look at some incidents because 
when we talk about drawing lines, let's look at specific incidents. See, mm. Duryodhan so, uh, was a manipulative person. He mm. was he was good at politics. In fact, if you read the first chapter or the first ten verses of the Bhagavad Gita, there also his politicking tendency comes up. How to how to mm. satisfy this person? How to praise this one? How to pander to the various uh, interest groups? Yeah, he speaks very highly of the his elders, also. and he tries to pump. Huh. And now the result of this is at at one level, Karna's gratitude is is laudable. If somebody has given such a great chance to Karna, change Karna's fortune, mm. then that's definitely praiseworthy. That that person's action is something which Karna should feel grateful for. That's mm-hmm. true. Having said that, let's look at a few more subtleties. See, f- uh, first of all, when Duryodhan made Karna the king of uh, Angadesh, so mm-hmm. at that time itself, the question comes up: Did Duryodhan have the right to do that? Mm. Because at that point, who was the heir to the kingdom was not yet decided. Mm. Dhritarashtra was the king, and would Yudhishthir become the king, or would Duryodhan become the king? Very so, good point. Whether he even had the right to offer a kingdom to Karna is open to question. The Pandavas, In fact, wasn't it the Pandavas? Wasn't Yudhishthir already the the expected crowned prince? Was oh, I don't know. Maybe I I just watched it in one of the yeah, cartoons. It's a complicated. See how <laughs> it happened was that that uh, Duryodhan grew up in the royal household. Mm. expecting to become right. the king because because what had happened was pandu had renounced the world and pandu because of an unfortunate uh, in, incident while hunting he had been cursed that if he ever tries to unite with his wives with any woman right. for that matter he would be cursed to die so right. it was expected that he would not have any children so so duryodhan grew up with that entitlement mentality that i am going to be the king Mm. Now, because everyone assumed. In the meanwhile, in the meanwhile uh, Pandu, he there was this in the past succession and having an heir was very very important. So there yeah. was a there was a ritual that if uh, if a man can some for some reason not impregnate uh, his wife, then in certain sanctified situations, the wife could be impregnated by someone else. And mm. it is only for that purpose they would unite, and that the child mm. would be considered not that person's uh, child, but rather the family's heir. Mm. So that was that was called niyog ritual. So mm. Pandu thought that maybe I should do with this with the sages. Then Pandu was delighted, and he said, "Someone uh, call the best of the gods," and mm. that's how the five Pandavas were born. So now through this process, Yudhishthir was born slightly before Duryodhan. Mm. So in that sense, if you consider the hierarchy, the, there was the principle of primogeniture that the oldest oldest mm, son usually becomes the king. So you could say mm. Yudhishthir was mm. entitled to be the king. But mm. then, what happened was Duryodhan had his own spin. Duryodhan said that you know Pandu had a Pandu had this curse by which he could not have children. So how do we even know? That the Pandavas' parentage is valid, right? So he sometimes cast aspersions on the Pandavas' parentage also. Mm. So of course, most people accepted because when Kunti came back from the Himalayas to the Pan to the Kuru kingdom, many of the leading sages from the forest came there with them. They said, you know, mm. we know what happened actually. Yeah. Now that so in that sense, there was no dispute about that. But but the point I'm making was that succession lines were not very clear at that time. Mm. So in one sense. Duryodhan had grown up expecting I would be the king, but I would be the prince and the king eventually, the heir apparent. But Yudhishthir was more in terms of line entitled for it. So mm. it was not clear, even if we agree that okay, it was not Yudhishthir was not in, not not the natural successor, but still Duryodhan couldn't just give the kingdom like that. Yeah. But when he gave a kingdom, the Pandavas saw that as a matter of the honor of their. Whole family. Mm. That is, in general, Shatriyas. One of their characteristics is to give charity. Mm. 
Right. So they didn't contest it. They were happy that to help Karna. They were not envious of Karna for no reason. Yeah, let the world never say that somebody from the Kuru Vamsha gave charity and then did promise to give charity and didn't give that charity. So the Pandavas right. went along with that. So mm. it was not just Duryodhana's kindness. Mm. It was also in one sense the Pandavas went along with it. That's the first point. Mm. Good point. The second point is that with respect to the Duryodhan Karna friendship, it is that Duryodhan, this friendship is a very, uh, you could say, sad example of how a good person can become bad by bad association. Mm. A good person can become bad by bad association. So Karna till this point has not really done anything which is questionable, which is, mm. uh, which is immoral. But what happens is that Karna was always looking for acceptance in the Kshatriya community. And for that, when Duryodhan gave him that acceptance, he time and time again has wanted to please Duryodhan. Now, mm. initially he opposed. Say for example, when after the Duryodhan made the plan that let's let's send the Kauravas, Pandavas away and burn them alive. Have them burned in Varanavat. So Karana mm. said, why do you have to do such things? Just challenge mm. them for a fight. We'll defeat them mm. and we will win the kingdom. Mm. So Duryodhan was, see if you consider the power dynamics, Karana was indebted to Duryodhan. So Karana could only suggest. Karana mm. couldn't impose. And Duryodhan was much more influenced by Shakuni than by Karana. And mm. Shakuni said, you know, war should never be fought if you can win by other means. And he said, mm. this is a fool. So, Karna was again and again neglected by Duryodhan. And mm. then after some time, he realized that, see, generally in any friendship, any relationship, uh, no matter how good the relationship is, if we give some suggestions and they are, they are met with disapproval, they are shot down, then what mm. happens is, we, we start you could say censoring ourselves after some time. Maybe I shouldn't speak. This is not going to help. Mm. So that what started happening. And in order to gain acceptance within Duryodhana's circle, Karana also started adopting some of Duryodhana's ways. Mm. Some of Duryodhana's ways. It's like, say, a, if you consider a child who has been brought up in a very cultured family, no bad habits, and the child goes mm. to college to hostel. And then everybody is maybe drinking over there, doing drugs. This is, I don't yeah. do such things. And then the kids say, hey, you are just a, you're just a baby who is string, still drinking your mother's milk. And they mm. tease him, they mock him. And sometimes that child may get under pressure. Yeah. And just to have a sense of acceptance in that peer social circle, the child may also start doing those things even, they do, even though he doesn't want to do those things. Mm. So, Something like that happened with Karna. That initially he was opposing Duryodhan, but eventually he stopped opposing Duryodhan because he wanted to be accepted in Duryodhana's inner circle. Mm. And not only started oppo stopped opposing, but he started actively going along with Duryodhana's plans. And you could say perhaps Karna's darkest moment in the entire Mahabharat comes in the in the Asat Sabha, in the assembly, you know, in, in the gambling match, when Yudhishthira mm. lost everything, when Draupadi was taken, Draupadi was also lost. Mm. At that time, in most dramatizations of the Mahabharat, this part is neglected. That it was actually Karna who suggested. Draupadi wow. is your now. Wow. Incredible. How, how the tables flipped for him. He had good samskaras, good, um, uh, you know, parenting and all that. And yet he completely, not only just flipped, but truly went to the dark side. Yes, that's a good way. That's the Star Wars thing. <laughs> he went to the dark side. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, That's true. That's true. Now, of course, to his credit, later on, Karana does say, he says to Bhishma and he says to Kar Krishna also, that I hmm. regret what I did at that time. What I Achha. did. There is, there is never, Duryodhana never says that I regret it. 
there is mm. no ever a single expression of regret from duryodhan but at that time karuna does say that you know it is mm. it is you know let draupadi be dragged into the assembly and let us dishonor her now that dishonoring when she was being disrobed was it that attempt was made to disrobe her actually I mean, was that because of lust or was that because of simply power it's difficult to discern you know means was mm. you know if they just wanted draupadi for themselves they could have had her separately also but that they tried to disrobe her in public mm. in front of the pandavas that was in draupadi in one sense was a was a tool for them to humiliate the pandavas they are humiliating yeah. draupadi humiliating the pandavas also so now we could say at one level that karna had been humiliated by draupadi and therefore he was getting back at her mm. and, okay but still there is a sense of proportionality Mm. one of the one of the principles in justice is that punishment should be proportional to the crime so even if mm. we say draupadi committed a crime or draupadi did something wrong by refusing karna's leadership uh, mm. rejecting him mm. as a suitor well okay that is bad but is this a proportional thing to mm. actually disrobe honorable lady in public no it is it is worse than death it is it is like the stuff of the worst nightmares for a person mm. most people most uh, most women would not be able to survive such a thing especially in mm. those times mm. so this is where even if karuna had a reason to be angry with draupadi but his mm-hmm. suggesting this was heinous and that mm. i'd say is a, is a influence of the toxic association of duryodhan so we should be grateful no doubt if somebody has mm. helped us to be grateful but gratitude is one virtue it is not the only virtue mm. and gratitude for one thing which somebody has done should that lead us to the rejection of all other virtues should right. be grateful to one person should we just give mm. up our conscience our sense of decency mm. well maybe gratitude also has its limits you know i give mm. an example for this that say now if you consider uh, terrorism islamic terrorism if you want to say you know the most of the people who become islamic extremists they are they are largely from afghanistan and, and pakistan mm. Mm. and especially the impoverished parts of those countries so imagine there's a child who is growing up impoverished and the child doesn't have any any means of living the child may die and at that time some of these uh, radical right wing madrasas the those who are factories of terror they take up mm. such a child they say we will feed you we will give you comfort we will give necessities we will give comforts and then child grows up now at that time for that child to be grateful to those who have provided the necessities of life for him that's good that's a natural quality but as mm. a child grows up as a child starts realizing oh these people are training me they are expecting me to go out and kill innocent people mm. just because somebody did one good thing for me it is a very important good thing but does mm. that mean that i am lifelong bound to them that in my gratitude to them whatever they want i should be doing that is the key question so mm. in one sense the mahabharat the driving question of the mahabharat is what is dharma mm. what is the right dharma means what is the right thing to do that is the key question dharma is not just religion dharma is just not some ritual dharma is of course dharma can be in those things also but in this context dharma means the right thing to do mm-hmm. and what makes the mahabharat multi layered is that many of the characters when they do the wrong thing also it is not because they are evil but no. it is because they prioritize a lower value over a higher value Mm. They prioritize a value which should be lower. Say, for example, in this Karna, he now this is not just Karna. We can look at several other characters also. Uh, we may we like Bhishma Dev, like Bhishma Dev also. Even Yudhishthir is going along with the gambling. Did he mm. really have to gamble? He knew what was going to happen. So he said, "No, right. Chatriya Vedi changed. Cannot gamble. Mm. Cannot say no to gamble." Uh, yes. Okay. but then did he have to keep gambling so much that he lost everything and he stake even his family yeah well 
So now, now, now we have to be very careful to acknowledge that Yudhishthir was not a gambling addict. No. He was not a compulsive guy. But at that time, he felt that the Kshatriya value of being challenged, I cannot refuse. I should mm. not come off as a coward. When I'm in challenge, how can I stop? But was that the most important value? Is it the Kshatriya's virtue of not appearing cowardly? That's a virtue. Mm. That's the only value to be mm. prioritized. So this is a tension mm. in the Mahabharata where characters often prioritize a lower value over a higher value. So we could say Karna ended up prioritizing his friendship with Duryodhan above his own character, his own natural virtues, his own conscience, his own decency. And that was the cause of his undoing. That, so that's how he ended up going on the dark side. As mm. uh, you mentioned. Yeah. Very, very interesting because uh, it, it almost seems impossible. When you hear these stories, you think, how are we going to make the right choices? If Bhishma Dev, if Yudhishthir Maharaj, if um, Karana, if Arjuna, if they are making, if they're getting confused about their dharma, about what is the right thing to do in the right time, then what hope do we have? Yes, that's a tough question. I'm not sure whether there's any easy answer to that. We can mm. only, broadly speaking, what if you see the Bhagavad Gita also does this. Although we say in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is there right next to Arjuna. And Krishna is there Still with guidance. Yes. Yeah, no, but even after that, Krishna doesn't mm. just give a straight answer to Arjuna. <laughs> Krishna, Arjuna, no, I am God, obey me, fight. You yes. reach the Bhagavad Gita words. It doesn't do that. Doesn't no. do that. What, Krishna, what Krishna is doing is basically through the Bhagavad Gita, he's doing us doing two things. He's giving us knowledge and he's giving us processes. And what are these mm. two for? The knowledge and the processes by which we can connect with, with the Paramatma within us. We can develop mm. our own consciousness. We can develop our Viveka Buddhi. Mm. So Viveka Buddhi is conscience. Ultimately, each of us has to take that decision ourselves. We can have our spiritual guides. We, may ha we have our Guru Varga. We have, our, uh, we have various other external resources which you can definitely turn towards. But ultimately, mm. life situation is so individual and so complex that each of mm. us has to take our decision. And taking that decision means that we need to have developed our conscience. That's why, if you see, the Mahabharata's answer is Dharma se tattvam nihitam guhayam. The dharma, the truth of dharma, it is secret. It is hidden in the cave of the heart. And <laughs> it's hidden in the cave of the heart. And Mahajano yena gataha sapantha. That means, he says, follow the path of the Mahajanas. Follow the path of the great souls. Now, this comes in the Bhagavatam. This comes also in the Mahabharata. Now, what does this mean? That the great souls have faced great bewilder, greatly bewildering situations. And mm. how they act in situations we can learn principles from those and then apply them mm. in our lives. Mm. Yes, it is, it is very difficult. This choosing the right thing is not easy. Mm. And uh, in one sense, Karana's predicament was difficult. At the same time, in my understanding at least, it's not, no matter what values, a, no matter how much a person values friendship, that mm. act of uh, attempting to disrobe, disrobe Draupadi is, is is completely unconscionable. Mm. You know, because that's, that's if it's quite Karana black and white. Is, it's not much gray area there. Now, yes. If Karna ever wanted to be really a Kshatriya, he says, oh, you people don't accept me as a Kshatriya. The world doesn't mm. accept me as a Kshatriya. Well, what defines a Kshatriya? The literal meaning of a word Kshatriya is Kshata Trayate Iti Kshatriya. Kshata is hurt, mm. injury. Trayate is protects. That means one mm. who protects people from harm, people from injury. So, one who protects <laughs> citizens, citizens, but in general, those who are disempowered, one who protects them from injury, from hurt. So, here well, would have been the best example for Karna to actually exhibit a Kshatriya characteristic. That if wow. you know that are suggesting something like that, Karana could have put his foot down. No, you cannot do this. This is against Kshatriya principles. 
Mm. Far from that, it was Karna who suggested that. So mm. we can say that here Karna, the same Karna who so much wanted to be accepted as Kshatriya. Was unable to truly follow the principles of, of being a Kshatriya. And this word that you, you explained, Kshatriya, is very yeah, powerful. Okay. It's, uh, you know, it, it's very interesting that you think to protect one from hurt, uh, but is somebody who takes up arms. So to hurt, to hurt someone, to protect someone, you must hurt someone. It's almost like you have to be ready to fight. To yeah, that is true. Protect. Very interesting. Very, uh, it's like almost a paradox, uh, oxymoron of a... Uh, anyway, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that is one of the ironies of life. Like even the United Nations sometimes sends peacekeeping force. So <laughs> you want peace, but you need force to uh, keep peace. So yes. I think an American president said that we will have a, we will have a strong army and that will prevent wars. Hmm. Now, I won't say that that's always true. But to some extent, yes, that uh, if the other party knows that there'll be consequences if I try to mess with these people, then they, yeah. that, that also creates some level of deterrence. So yes, Kshatriyas mm. have to be ready to use force, have to be ready to, to protect. inflict violence to prevent others, to prevent uh, uh, social disruptors from taking the law in their hands, from inflicting violence. Very interesting. Mm. So... Now, just to get a sense of how much Karana's compass went off, just to get a sense of that, how, how much Karana's compass, moral compass went off, let's try to understand what is happening. Now, say, here, suppose there, there have always been, say, lusty, abusive men throughout human history who have abused women. That is mm -hmm. there. But normally, somebody who does something like this, will do it in a dark, secret place where mm. that person will not be caught. But if somebody does something like that, not in a dark, secret place, but in public, mm. that means that person is not only doing something wrong, but that person has no fear that mm. I will be held accountable for doing this wrong thing. Mm. Now, what to think of that? If somebody does a crime like this, in the police station itself or in the judge yes. in the courtroom itself then that means that person has become completely brazen they have mm. become so drunk with their own power that they they are flouting the, all mm. the systems of law now mm. to take this worse if a, if a policeman maybe a police inspector or someone does a crime like this inside the police station how heinous would it be? Now, in math, you have like a number, you have a number squared, number cubed, and you get a number quadrupled. Hmm. So, for a policeman to do a crime like this, or a police inspector to do a crime like this inside a police station, hmm. would be a atrocious crime. Gross misconduct. It's beyond, beyond reprehensible. So, it's like a fourth level crime. So, in one sense, what Karna did over there, what Karna he instigated over there with Draupadi was that horrendous, that heinous in action. So that was the extent to which, unfortunately, his moral compass went off by bad association. Mm. Would you say that this is the reason why Sri Krishna, you know, Bhagavan, he still, even after understanding that, you know, maybe Karna is not fully to blame, his, his, his bad luck, uh, you see that Krishna still does not cut him any slack. You know, he's, he he allows some cheating behavior to happen so that Karna can be, you know, taken to task. So uh, if you could explain okay. how does Krishna, how you know, he's supposed to be neutral, he's supposed to be everybody's friend. Why is he then in one sense taking sides? Hmm. Oh, yes. Maybe before we go to that, actually, we can look at how Karna, in spite of all that he had done, still got a chance from Krishna. Achha. Okay. When Krishna, when Krishna came as Shanti Dut, as a, with a peace messenger, with a peace proposal to Duryodhan, he offered peace on the most accommodating of terms. 
Mm. Uh, in fact, he said that you can just give the Pandavas five villages. They are, they are, they are five Kshatriyas. Let them rule over five villages. That's all that they want. Mm. And then Duryodhan replied that I won't give them enough land even to put the tip of a needle through. <laughs> so it is there is one thing is saying no and the other is saying like slamming the door in the face of someone. Like we invite mm. somebody for a program and they say, you know, I have this, I have this thing to do. I have that thing to do. So I can't come for the program. Now, it may be a lie, but they are making some excuses and don't come for the program. But yeah. imagine if somebody says, imagine if somebody says, you know, even if I die, my dead body will never come to your program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's vengeful. Just the, the, over the top. Yeah. So Duryodhana's rejection was like that. Hmm. Now, when Krishna offered the peace proposal, actually Krishna's proposal was so persuasive that not only all the elders... None of the elders mm. like Bhishma or Drona wanted the war. But even Dushasan was temporarily swayed. And mm. Dushasan said that, you know, Duryodhan, if Duryodhan doesn't agree with Krishna, we will, we will arrest Duryodhan and hand him over to Krishna. Gotcha. And Duryodhan, was, Duryodhan was alarmed. Yeah. And then Duryodhan said, this Karana is, Krishna is influencing too much. Duryodhan just walked out. And when Duryodhan walked out of that assembly, then all his brothers started saying, should we follow Duryodhan, should we follow Dushasan? And then they, for them, Duryodhana was the natural leader. And Dushasan was the second leader. They All the mm. other 98 brothers went with Duryodhana. And yeah, Dushasan was left all alone. And Dushasan was left all alone. What happened? Dushasan said, I'll also go. And mm. now, Duryodhana was also an expert manipulator. And now Duryodhana could sense that Dushasan is coming in now. He could have blasted at Dushasan. How dare you betray me like this? Mm. But he sensed that Dushasan is outside the door thinking of coming inside. And Duryodhana said, but this Krishna is, is a great word juggler. You know, he can fool everyone. The way he speaks, even intelligent people can be misled by his words. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't that what happened to you, Dushasan? I turned toward mm. Dushasan. Now, what happened is that Dushasan got a face-saving excuse over here. He said, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, that's what happened. So, mm. so the point I'm making is that Krishna's peace proposal was very, very persuasive, but Duryodhana rejected it. So then the mm. next day, when before Krishna was going back, Krishna told Karna, I want to meet you. And he told Karna the truth that you are actually the son of Kunti. You are actually the, uh, the first son of Kunti born before her marriage. And therefore, actually you deserve to be the king. Now what Duryodhana has given you, you by your birth deserve much more. Mm. You will be, you will, you will be, have a position greater than Yudhishthir. The person whose respect you wanted, Ar Arjuna, that Arjuna will be, you will be the older brother of Arjuna. Arjuna will follow you the way the devatas follow Indra. He says, wow. reclaim what is yours by birth. Mm. Reclaim the right that is yours and come on the side of the Pandavas, come on the side of virtue. Mm. Now, this this particular proposal is actually remarkably accommodating of Krishna. Mm. And now somebody might say that uh, no, wasn't now no, Karna refused that proposal. But it's interesting what all Karna says at that time. He says, Krishna, what you're saying is true. I have had ominous dreams. He had an inkling that that something In was my, my dreams I've seen that and then he's that Duryodhan is uh, wearing white and is in a chariot that is taking him toward the heavens. And Duryodhan is dressed in black and is in a car that is taking him downwards. Toward, so mm. that indicates that Duryodhan, Krishna is going to be that, that Yudhishthir will be victorious and Duryodhan will be defeated. But he said that Duryodhan helped me when no one would. I cannot betray him now. It is by his confidence. In, his, in my faithfulness to him, in my military promise, that he has challenged the Pandavas. So mm. how can I say no to him now? I cannot let him down. He said, I, I have made a life here. I have my, I have my parents here. I have, my, uh, I have a wife. I have children. I cannot reject it all just to become a part of the Pandava family. So he, in one sense, again, Claims that his choice is virtuous. Mm. Again, it's 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 not. Again, it's like 
between two virtues when we have to choose which mm. is a higher virtue that is something which is not a easy decision mm. so now yes he as a friend you have to be faithful to a friend but to what extent if mm. that friend is going on a wrong path what does our friendship mean does mean we go on the wrong path with them or that we mm. stop them from going on the wrong, wrong path now in many ways if karana had chosen to come on krishna's side on the pandava side rather then it it could have been it could have actually broken the back of duryodhana's uh, antagonism because mm. you know, although duryodhana had very powerful warriors he had bhishma with him he had drona with him he had ashwatthama with him but none of them shared his animosity toward the kauravas toward the pandavas acha so none of them they were, they were always kindly disposed toward the pandavas but they somehow circumstantially had to fight on the side of duryodhana So the mm. only person, apart from his brothers, who shared his animus, his animosity was Karna. And if Karna <laughs> had gone on the side of the Pandavas, maybe the whole war could have been avoided. It was, wow. or at least the war wouldn't have been that bitter. So Krishna gave Karna that choice. And as far as so, so in one sense, Karna could have been a truer friend to Duryodhan. by stopping him from a war that would lead to duryodhan's death it would lead to the death of all his 99 brothers that would lead to the death of uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of warriors so maybe that would have been a better way for karana to show his friendship to duryodhan of course so, so now that's one thing and as far as parents and his family is concerned even there krishna was not telling uh, karana to reject his family it no. is that There is no rejection of his family. Just like if you look at Krishna's own example, yeah, he has Krishna two sets of parents. parents. Two set of parents. So Krishna never rejected uh, Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. Mm-hmm. So similarly, Karna wouldn't have to reject Adirath and Adirath and that that family just because he became a part of Kunti's family or the Kuru family. So, mm. so on one side, in you can say that he mm. got his ethics terribly wrong over here. so mm. he got that that was a terrible decision and that's why you could say at this point karana sealed his fate it was this decision to stay on with the kauravas when krishna had given him a opportunity to come to a uh, the virtuous side that is when he went terribly wrong so i have written an elaborate set of articles which i hope in future to make into a book about karana mm. but this this particular mm. choice i say it was a choice between the word of honor and the life of honor hmm. choice between Good the word point. of honor the word of honor is he has told duryodhan you will have my lifelong friendship hmm. so is the word of honor important or is the life of honor life of honor means that he lives true to his own values true to the hmm. values of decency and dharma or he goes along with uh, somebody who is very adharmic so that is the choice he had because this unfortunate choice sealed his fate well, wouldn't we say that um, bhishma pitama had the same dilemma and he also chose the wrong path but how did he then achieve liberation and the love of krishna <laughs> because he also yeah. had the same same dilemma word of on uh, he he had to keep his pratigya that is the only reason why he was fighting Uh, that is true that is true now you know bhishma is himself a very complex character right? maybe we could yeah, yeah. discuss separately Sorry, about yeah. him but we will no, no, we'll go quickly I'll, mention, no, yeah. quickly I'll mention that two things that uh, first is although bhishma went along with karana with with uh, duryodhan because he felt i was bound by my vow but still mm. bhishma made his concerns his objections known at every occasion time mm. and time he told duryodhan that you cannot win against krishna you are mm. against the side of earth. from beginning to mm. end he was doing that so now see there is a there is a very devotional way of looking at it and there is a you could say analytical or uh, karmic way of looking at it so mm. in one sense uh, from the analytical or karmic way of looking at it Bhishma also did a very ro- great wrong when he watched on when Draupadi was being dishonored. 
when he chose yeah. to fight on the side of the Kauravas. And the mm. consequence of that was that he suffered great bodily pain. He had to lie mm. on that arrow bed for weeks together. It was, mm. it was excruciatingly painful. Mm. So that is, that is a karmic way of analyzing it. That he did mm. a wrong and he did get results for that. At the same time, his heart was in the right place. His mm. heart was in the right place, although his head made a wrong calculation. He was always devoted to Krishna and Krishna understood that. And in one sense, mm. Krishna used Vishma Pitamaha to illustrate a principle that no matter how powerful you are, if you go against the cause of dharma, you will eventually mm. be destroyed. So wow. you could say with respect to Bhishma, he, he, he was used as an illustration for that service. So now we can say that Krishna did not overlook his wrong choice because of his bhakti, that he made a wrong choice and there were consequences for that wrong choice. Mm. But Krishna also did not overlook his bhakti because of his wrong choice. Yeah, you were <laughs> a devoted person and that is why Krishna, you made one wrong choice, but that does not mean that I reject you. Krishna mm. came with Bhishma at the last time in his life and was there with him to help him have the most perfect departure from the world. Mm. So yes. So it's it's you could say there are degrees of wrong choices also. And is it like one wrong choice within a whole life which has gone on of the wrong track? Or mm. is one wrong choice within a life which which one is on the right track and one is trying to get others on the right track? So that mm. is the difference between Vishma and Karna. Right. Thank you. That, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Great clarification. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, important question. <laughs> so we're, we're we really... Go the... Yeah, go yeah, on. Please go ahead. Well, I was just going to say no, that, uh, that, you know... Huh. Sorry, <laughs> there's a delay no, there. No, please, please. You, can speak. you can speak first, yeah. Please. Well, uh, you know, we're at one an hour and 25 minutes. So uh, I'll, I'll let you, you know, maybe finish uh, um, the last few topics, last few points that we have on here, and we'll have to okay. possibly come come back another day for the questions because there are many questions. But I'm conscious that you yeah, have so. another program today as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, maybe I'll just uh, take two points. The first is about was Karana. Uh, you know, why did Krishna eventually have Karana killed unfairly? I can see uh, there's, a, there's a comment over here that Karana didn't know Krishna was God. Mm. Well, that is, that's true. But you know, nowhere in the Mahabharat that is Krishna mm. make the case that I am God, so you have to, you have to obey me. <laughs> Even from a <laughs> purely never the... person. Yes, yes, that could be one argument. But mm. that is not the only argument. And mm. you know, even if he didn't know that Krishna was God, Krishna had just shown his Virat Rupa his Vishwarupa mm -hmm. in the Guru assembly. So he could have yeah. shown that this is extraordinary. Certainly. Mm -hmm. So my point is that that yeah. even if it, he doesn't accept Krishna as God, still from the point of view of ethics, what Krishna said made ethical sense. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, he didn't accept that. So then eventually, when Karna was killed unfairly, that let's quickly recap the incident. So mm -hmm. this was the 17th day of the war. And Karana's chariot started sinking into the uh, ground. And he realized that I cannot fight if my, I'm immobilized. So he got off his chariot and he tried to pull, his, pull the wheel out. And at that time, he told Arjuna, Arjuna, don't entertain thoughts which are entertained by cowards. Remember the codes of morality. Mm. And wait for me till I'm ready to fight. Mm. So... Arjuna dutifully put his bow down. And at that time, Krishna said to Karna, Oh Karna, it is fortunate indeed that today you remember the codes of morality. <laughs> Was it the codes of morality by which you suggested that Draupadi be disrobed? Was mm. it the codes of morality by which you conspired with the Kauravas to have the Pandavas along with their mother burnt alive? Was it the codes of morality by mm. which you along with five other warriors ganged up on the 16 year old Abhimanyu and killed him? If Krishna went on and gave a list of all the wrongdoings which Karna had been a part of. 
and he said if you follow those codes of morality arjuna will follow those same codes of morality today <laughs> and arjuna shoot kya baat hai arjuna shot hmm. so and karna was beheaded so now the point i would like to make is here krishna is krishna is teaching one particular principle over here it you can say chanakya pandit calls that shatho shatyam with the cunning be cunning now don't be cunning on your own but with mm. the cunning be cunning. don't be naive don't be naive mm. the opponent is cunning be cunning with them now specifically the killing of karna from the codes of morality could seem to be immoral but actually karna had himself done the same thing to arjuna's son Mm. and abhimanyu's chariot had been destroyed and abhimanyu was on the ground karna had been among the warriors who had been shooting at him karna mm. abhimanyu had been defenseless he, he he had been defenseless and karna shot at him abhimanyu was trying to grab a wheel and grab a mace whatever he could and he could fight mm. so in one sense arjuna was not the first wrong doer over there arjuna did mm. to karna what karna had done to arjuna's son with fatal mm. consequence hmm? mm. so in one sense you say point. karma hits you back you know what he did yes. came back to hit him mm. and another really important point is that some people say that karna was actually a better archer and arjuna couldn't have killed karna by any honest means and that's why he had to use this mm. well not necessarily now i won't go into the full history but i'll quickly recap the incidents when they had an encounter So, if you keep a score, now I talk about mm. the martial exhibition. Karna equated Arjuna, but he couldn't exceed Arjuna. So it was Karna mm. zero, Arjuna zero. Hmm? Mm. Then after that, when Drupada wanted his Guru Dakshina, he said, "You know, you arrest Drona and bring him before me." So Duryodhan went and attacked Drona, and Karna also went with him. Hmm? Mm. But Drupada defeated defeated Duryodhan and Karna together. Then after that, mm. the Pandavas went. and they attacked drupada and the pandavas defeated drupada so you could say it was not a direct match between karna and uh, arjuna but but indirectly yeah karna and arjuna defeated drupada so you yeah. could say arjuna won karna zero hmm. Hmm. then after that during draupadi swayamvar after draupadi won the hand after Dhru- arjuna won the draupadi's hand they attacked so when all hmm. the kshatriyas attacked at that time arjuna and bhima they fought so hmm. eventually uh, it became like a face off between arjuna and karna and karna was initially fighting lightly because he didn't want to attack or injure a brahmana but arjuna soon countered all his arrows and karna realized i can't win over here and karna put just put down his bow so that was again a draw no neither of them won hmm. then after that so that was the third encounter the fourth encounter between them was at virat when the pandavas agnyatvas got over at that time arjuna was alone on one side and the entire kaurava army was there on the other side and karna was also there in that army so at that time arjuna defeated all of them including karna so this is mm. arjuna 2 karna 0 so there is not a single incident in the mahabharat where karna came anywhere near defeating arjuna <laughs> so that means that when arjuna krishna told karna arjuna to kill karna while he was charioteer of his chariot that was not because arjuna mm. was not competent of defeating karna mm. it is more that krishna wanted to teach a message teach a lesson send a message that don't be naive when dealing dealing with cunning people with the cunning you can be cunning so yes you know that cutting off his head that has become immortalized mm. uh, that you know the how is unfair mm. but you know, maybe we have to immortalize abhimanyu's killing of which karna was also a part so yes. karna is overall you know, yes life treated him unfairly but life treats mm. everyone unfairly ultimately <laughs> karma was not doomed by his uh, by the unfairness that with which his life began karma mm. was karna was doomed by the wrong choices that he made so in that sense that's why i said karna yes was he a wrong hero well yes everybody is wronged by life in some way or the other and he was you can mm-hmm. say he was terribly wrong but everybody is wronged 
but ultimately he is a wrong hero he made wrong choices and that's mm. what led to terrible consequences for him it's wonderful uh, i know there's so much ground to cover today but i really appreciate it. i'm just going to answer this one uh, sorry this one here because it seems it seems that um, th- this somehow becomes a, a standard koi doodh ka dhula hua nahi tha matlab pandav bhi utne hi kharab the aur kaurav bhi utne hi kharab the you know someone might say that that that's the conclusion but actually that's not what we're saying at all that that is that is the opposite of <laughs> the conclusion here oh, wow. ki no because doodh ke dhule hue hone se kya fayda dharma ke path par chalne ka point hai this the point here no all complexity means that yes it is true that nobody's character is completely spotless hmm. because real is complex we all have to make hmm. decisions and sometimes even the best among us may make decisions which may regret hmm. but just because you know there are everybody that there is no that nobody is white that mm. doesn't mean nobody is spotlessly white that doesn't mean that everyone is equally gray exactly that is you know, there are there are you could say if you want to put a moral compass yudhishthir and the pandavas were quite virtuous duryodhan was quite vicious shakuni was quite mm. vicious karna could have been on the side of virtue but by his actions as the mahabharat narrative moves forward he moves from the side of virtue more and more towards the side of vice so mm. yes there is moral complexity but moral there is a difference between moral complexity and moral relativism moral mm. relativism means there's no right or wrong moral <laughs> complexity <laughs> means there's nobody there's, it's not as every one person is absolutely good and another person is absolutely bad there is moral mm. complexity but that doesn't mean moral relativism relatively speaking arjuna did act much more virtuously throughout his life and karna did make choices which were completely against virtue okay right right thank you and i think that was a, a great point to just highlight would you like to uh, just summarize everything or are you running out of time yeah, to yes thank you okay. i do that okay so maybe one point is about kunti i just mentioned that now was kunti wrong in abandoning her son in the childhood well hmm. very difficult to decide what could she do she was just a teenage girl at that time and she had prayed to surya dev and she got a she got this son she didn't know what to do with him mm-hmm. so now it is not that she simply abandoned the son that is something mm-hmm. she, in those situations for for a woman to have a child outside marriage even today it is not it is not very easily accepted in most societies but at that mm-hmm. time it was it would have been very very difficult so mm-hmm. she didn't really have much choices but even when then she didn't simply abandon the child actually she she got a very good very uh, a good safe sturdy wooden basket she filled it with uh, not just uh, blankets and other things to comfort the child she also put a lot of precious jewels over there from her own jewelry so that whoever found this child they would know that he is not an ordinary child he is from a royal family or he is from a illustrious family and they would take care of the child and then when she put that child uh, she put that child in a in the water in the river at that time she put the child in the river at a time when the river tides were relatively gentle she didn't drown the child and mm. she prayed to surya dev this is your son please mm. take care of him she play mm. pray to vayu please they take this child to a loving to set of loving parents and mm. she prayed to lord vishnu please aradhya dev please take care of this child so kunti didn't simply heartlessly abandon her child that's one thing mm. and then even mm. when kunti she told karna just before the war that that actually you are you are my son before and i had you before my marriage she told her what all mm. had happened mm-hmm. so uh, this was some people say this was just karna kunti's attempt to weaken karna's morale she didn't tell the mm. pandavas she didn't tell the pandavas but she told karna why did she mm. do like that so karna knew so karna couldn't fight whole heartedly against the pandavas because he knew they were his brothers well there is as far as the mahabharat narrative goes there is no indication that karna karna's resolve to fight weakened mm. that is resolve to fight weakened 
Now she said she just wanted to say, save her sons. Well, is that a bad desire? For every mother, she will want to protect her children. So mm -hmm. she wanted to save her son. And Karana told her. Now Karana had a reputation of being Danavir, a person who is very charitable. So he, gave, he told her that you have come to me with a request. Uh, uh, Kunti's request was, you come on the Pandava's side. I will tell you this too. You come on the Pandava's side. You don't fight with Duryodhana or fight mm -hmm. on Duryodhana's side rather. But he said, I can't do that. But I, 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 anybody who comes to me, that person will never go disappointed. So I give you a promise that you will always have five sons. I will not kill any of your other four sons. I will... I, I have a lifelong rivalry, rivalry with Arjuna. With Arjuna. But he would not attack any yeah. of the other sons. Yeah. The generosity. But that was not what Kunti had asked him. That's very important to understand. Kunti's mm. hope was to avoid a war between... Her sons. Between, uh, between her sons. But was it by weakening one son? No. And... Karana told her, don't tell your other son, don't tell you this, don't tell the Pandavas. No, that he said that I want this to be a fair fight. I mm. want to show the world that I am better than Arjuna. If Arjuna knows this, if Yudhishthira knows it, they will, they will not fight. So, it was not that Draupadi selectively chose to manipulate Karana. That's one mm. thing. And, yeah. So, it is not that Kunti actually... So Karana was charitable, no doubt. There is this comment about Karana gave his Kavach and Kundal to Surya Dev when he came. Surya Dev, so not, not Surya, Indra came as a Brahman and asked him for charity. So he had a Kavach which made him which made him undefeatable. And mm. he gave that Kavach in charity. Well, you know, there are two different things over here. Is there is not being defeated and there is winning. Or not being mm. defeated or not being killed. Mm. Not being killed and winning. Actually, I forgot one more incident that in the when the Kurukshetra war before the Kurukshetra war, when the Pandavas were in, in the forest, at that time Duryodhan came to parade his wealth before the Pandavas. So just see how wealthy I am, how poor you are. Mm. And at that time they were in Kamyavan, and the place where the Pandavas were staying, on the other side, the Gandharvas were staying. The Gandharvas were sporting basically. And Duryodhan said, I am the king of the earth. So all of you Gandharvas, get out of here. I want to enjoy. Gandhara said, no, we don't obey you. We are Gandharvas. <laughs> Duryodhan got into a fight with them. And when Duryodhan got into a fight with them, at that end, Gandharvas effortlessly defeated Duryodhan, Dushasan, Karana, Shakuni. In fact, Karana fled mm. at that time. And Duryodhan was arrested. And at that time, one of Duryodhan's uh, soldiers, he ran over. Duryodhan has been arrested. So then, Yudhishthir said, oh, he is a member of our family and our royal lady. He had come with the royal ladies also, his queens and others. They have also been arrested. Bhima and Yudhishthir, you, Bhima and Arjuna, you go and save him. So then Arjuna went and defeated the Gandharvas. So the point mm. I'm making is that the Gandharvas defeated Karana and Arjuna defeated the Gandharvas. So we could say even before the final match, the score was 3 0. Mm. <laughs> but okay, yeah. by, I was reminded of this question, reminded of this point was that his armor meant that he would not be he would not be killed but that mm. did not mean he would not be defeated he would not be wounded in fact mm. in the fight with the Gandharvas, he was so badly wounded that he just he just had to retreat and he, he turned mm. away and retreated you could say he fled so mm. he could be wounded. so yes was it a charity well you could say at one level it was a charity he gave up his protection from death but in exchange, he got a blessing. <laughs> and what was the exactly. blessing was the Shakti weapon. The Shakti weapon was something which it is an arrow which nobody could counter. And with that arrow, he hoped to kill, uh, kill Arjuna. Arjuna. So in one sense, was it a charity or was it like a deal? Was it a swap? Mm. Is it, I, I, I give up my protection from death. So that I can get a tool by which I can ensure my enemy's death. Mm. Well, that's not exactly charity. Yes. <laughs> Good that's point. It's, it's a deal. And mm. Arjuna, Karana, when he gave the charity also, he said, later on he said, I know. I know that you are, you are Indra. And you have come. In fact, 
Surya Dev had come and told me that Indra will come like this, and you don't give him the charity. Mm. So, so in that sense, he he expected that Indra will also Indra is a devta, so he'll also be expected to give something to me in return if I do something for him. If I propitiate mm. him, then he'll have to give something mm. to me. So in that sense, mm. uh, yes, he was charitable, but at least in this case, his charity was also calculative. I'll get something in return. Right. So I think that was just the one part of the question. So I mean, we could go on, but I think I'll summarize over <laughs> it. That's okay with you. Yes. Yes, please. Are there any specific questions about Karana that you see in the chat, which we are not uh, addressed? There, the... Oh, there's there's quite a few, but uh, not not any not any particular for Kar Karana. No, not at the moment. I think you've addressed most of them. Yes. I think we have discussed mostly about Karana quite comprehensively now, as yes. well as possible. So I'll summarize. So I started by discussing about, yes, was life unfair to Karana? Yes, definitely it was. But although he was born in the royal family, he was given away by his mother who had him before birth. So he didn't get royal privileges. But then life is unfair to everyone ultimately, just in different ways. Arjuna also didn't have it easy. He lost his father. He was threatened while with his life. He lived under constant threat of life, even while at home. So, in that sense, uh, life makes it tough. Everybody can complain about life has been how life has been unfair to them, mm -hmm. and because Karana's the unfairness that Karana was subjected to plays into the narrative that India had this terrible caste system which discriminated against people. So he becomes mm. the poster child for that. Mm. But but everybody gets a bad set of cards. Nobody gets a perfect set of cards. How we play it is what matters. And mm. to a particular point, both Karana and Arjuna played their cards well. They both, mm. despite obstacles, went on to become great archers. Mm. And both of them did get a game-changing moment when they formed the powerful alliance. Arjuna with Drupada. And Karana with Duryodhana. And that turned their fortunes. Unfortunately, what happened was Karana, Arjuna's alliance with Drupada didn't in any way corrode his character. But because mm. Karana was uh, allied with Duryodhan, who was significantly evil, so Karana mm. became an example of how a good person becomes bad by bad association. And then Karana, mm. out of his commitment or gratitude to Duryodhan started losing his moral compass. So much so that instead of opposing Duryodhana's uh, vicious activities, he assisted in them. It was he who mm. unfortunately, so you could say that he felt insulted by Draupadi's refusing uh, to consider his suit in the Swayamvar. And mm -hmm. yeah, but again, was that because solely because of caste? Or was that just Draupadi asserting her right as a bride who can choose her, uh, choose her groom? So, so, even if he had felt insulted at that time, there is also the proportionality for him to suggest that Draupadi be disrobed. That was uh, the lowest moment of his life. That was his going to the darkest in the dark side. And it is like a person who always wanted to be a Kshatriya, which means a protector of people, ended up doing the very opposite of protecting people. And mm. that was a very heinous act. You could say like a person trying to dishonor a woman, not just dishonor a woman in secret, in public, but in in the house of law, in the as assembly where law is to be, code where law is to establish. And that too is not just a person, but a person who is meant to be a protector. So it's like mm. a, you could say wrong action quadrupled. Not just mm. wrong, wrong square, wrong cube, but wrong quadrupled. And even after that, Krishna gave him a chance. And so Karna's tragedy is that the Karana's tragedy reflects the moral complexity of the Mahabharata. But what is the right thing to do? So, it is when there are two options which are right, uh, then it becomes problematic. Is one more right than the others? So, Karana, should he have been faithful to his friend lifelong? Or should he have stayed true to his own virtuous character? And mm. stuck to decency, stuck to culture, stuck to actual Kshatriya virtues. There's one person who gave him official or formal respect as a Kshatriya, but that very person actually 
took away his kshatriya character prevented him from actually being a protector of people mm. noted his character his choice was a, a life of honor or the word of honor so there are mm. certain uh, certain distortions in dramatized depictions of the mahabharat so draupadi never went out of her way to insult karna and it and draupadi didn't say didn't say insult duryodhana specifically also by saying andhe ka beta andha and even if karna felt insulted by draupadi you know, there is a proportionality she not being she not accepting her suit and then he trying to dishonor disrobe her in public it's completely disproportionate mm-hmm. so then when he rejected krishna's proposal there also he prioritized friendship uh, friendship or gratitude over all other virtues it's like say a child whose life is saved by a terrorist organization that person said oh because i'm grateful so life long i'll become an instrument of terror and kill innocent people mm. the gratitude have to go that far and even if he said that i have a life with my parents here krishna was not telling him to leave that he could have had dual parents so it was his mm. choice that sealed his fate and finally when karna was killed unfairly well the three things in that first of all uh, krishna Ka- arjuna could have killed him fairly we talked about how in their overall face offs arjuna score was 30 karna was never the better yeah. archer uh, so but krishna wanted to illustrate that with the cunning you can be cunning so what karna had done to arjuna's son abhimanyu krishna told yeah. arjuna to do that to karna so karna is a hero is a complex he reflects the moral complexity of the mahabharat but moral complexity doesn't mean moral relativism that everybody yeah. equally nobody is white so everybody is yes nobody may be spotlessly white but that doesn't mean everybody is equally black mm. there are people who are lesser and more white or black so karna mm. was a person who could have been white but by his bad association and by his bad choices he went more and more on the dark side and that's because a life may have wronged him but eventually mm. he was not just a wrong hero he became a wrong hero mm. that's how he became. <laughs> our our reference to black and white it has nothing to do with skin color it was just a comment that was passed here the where where the, oh, yeah. where the commenter where the commenter was saying that oh nobody is dhula hua no one is as washed as white as uh, as you know as we imagine the pandavas should be meaning he re- re- he was referring to the the kind of deception that krishna and arjuna may have uh, used to kill karana not deception but uh, killing him when he was down in one sense yeah, anyway so we just want to make that thank you so thank much you. prabhu uh, really you. really thoughtful very good apt questions and i have spoken on this topic many times before but your discussion brought your questions brought out many more points than what i have spoken before thank you so much oh, for this i'm very very grateful we'll be back soon and maybe next time we can address uh, actual varna the varnashram system and oh, yes, where, w- w- how it's applicable in uh, today's world i think that would might be very relevant thank you for everyone listening please do share it uh and yes thank you again prabhu please pray for us hare krishna thank you, thank you. Hare krishna, Hare krishna.